Welcome back to the channel. Well, in January this year, 2024, our BT landline phone was switched from analog to digital and I posted a video out on that and I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Well, moving on, I've since gone full fibre to the premises, also known as FTTP. And in this video, I'll talk about a typical full fibre setup, my full fibre setup and battery backup because I received a lot of questions and comments regarding power cuts. Gail's done me a sketch. That's why we've got curtains on the windows. <laughs> right, I'll explain a typical full fiber setup. If you've got a master socket with copper cable, the master socket is taken away because it's no longer required and the copper cable is replaced with a fiber cable. This is the marking on the external overhead drop cable. This is a sample of fibre cable and I'll show you in a bit more detail. There are various layers that make up the fibre cable. The outer jacket, this is a rip cord, strengthening fibres, buffer jacket, silicon coating, cladding and the central core. And this is comparing it to the copper wire. There are two ways the fibre cable can come to your property. Either overhead from a pole or underground. We'll look at the pole. On top of the pole is a connectorised block terminal. This has dedicated sockets to feed individual properties. So the fibre cable comes overhead and it drops down the external wall of your property into a customer splice point, a CSP, or you could call it a service point. This is a box. And another fibre cable comes out of the CSP and enters the property. Looking at the below ground cable route, there'll be a connectorised block terminal in an underground structure. The fibre cable will run underground up the wall to the CSP. And this bit of cable will be covered with plastic capping and then the uh, fibre cable will come out of the CSP and enter the building. Right, looking inside the property, this is the CSP fixed to the external wall and here is the fibre cable coming through the wall to the ONT and that's optical network termination and that's a little box. This needs power so that's plugged into an electrical socket. The hub or router obviously needs power so that's plugged into an electrical socket. And the ONT is connected to the hub with a network patch lead. This is the network patch cable BT sent me. It's a Cat5e cable with red RJ45 plugs, but I didn't use this. I'll explain why later. The patch cable came in this bag together with this card. And there's a little WAN sticker, paper clip to it. Uh, one stands for wide area network and you stick this on the appropriate socket on the rear of the hub. Well, I didn't need to use this because my hub is already labelled. And there's also some information on the other side you can uh, pause and read. Right, I'll show you my setup now. Our fibre cable comes in overhead. Well, I didn't want the cable running down the external wall, so I asked for it to go straight into the loft space. I'm in the loft and this is where the master socket used to be and the copper cable came in from overhead and fed the master socket. Well, they're now done away with. This is where the new fibre cable comes in. It's clipped to the rafter, clipped underneath the timber purlin and it goes into the CSP, customer splice point or customer service point. This fibre cable comes out of the CSP and into this conduit that I've installed. I'll show you the measurements of the CSP box. It's 143 millimetres wide. To the top of the hinge, 170 millimetres and 32, or 33 millimetres in depth. I'll show you a short clip on installation day of the Openreach engineer splicing these two fibre cables together. So we've got your overhead cable coming in to the CSP which is customer splice point 
and then you've got your inside out cable comes in the other way and they're both joined together uh, with a splicer and then the splice is covered with a splice protector heat it up to shrink around the uh, joint and then the fibers wrapped around wrapped around inside and closed up done it, these are normally on the outside normally on the outside yeah I just wanted it in the in the loft just to keep the outside tidy one thing to bear in mind if you have the service point inside your property any fault diagnostic work would have to be done from this point so an appointment would be necessary with your provider but obviously if it's on the outside you don't need to be in this is the other end of the conduit and here's the fiber cable plugged into the ONT and this is where the fiber optic terminates the optical network termination box it's 80 millimeters wide 80 millimeters in height and 25 millimeters in depth so this is the power feed for the ONT and that's plugged in here this is where you would use the patch lead that BT sent you plug one end into the LAN port local area network and the other end is plugged into the WAN socket wide area network on the back of the hub this is an installation by Openreach Contractors MJ Quinn as you can see the CSP customer splice point or customer service point is slightly different and slightly smaller than mine here you can see the optical cable coming out of the CSP and plugging into the ONT this is the electrical connection that goes off to an electrical socket and here you can see the Cat5e patch lead which plugs into the hub. The reason I didn't use the patch cable that was sent to me is because this is a Cat5e cable and I've got a network system wired in Cat7 and I wanted to keep everything consistent. Well, a Cat 5E cable transmits 1 gig over 100 meters, and a Cat 7 transmits 10 gig over 100 meters. And the bandwidth for a Cat 5E is 100 megahertz, and for a Cat 7, it's 600 megahertz. This Cat 5E cable is marked UTP, which stands for Unshielded Twisted Pairs. Well, the Cat 7 is a SFTP which stands for shielded foil twisted pairs and the foil around the twisted pairs prevents electromagnetic interference and alien crosstalk but when you do use a shielded cable it needs to be properly grounded you wouldn't generally wire a network system in cat7 in a domestic property but it were my choice these are the two patch cables if you've watched my telephone video, you'll know I've got conduits in the wall and that's how the network cable comes down from the loft to the hub. This is my network patch lead, Cat7, plugged into port number one. And then that's plugged into the wall socket, which feeds the networking system. And the patch lead plugged into port number two is just a patch lead that I use here on the desk if I'm uh, using a laptop and I, I have a hardwired connection. And now on to the subject of battery backup. You don't have to have battery backup, but in the event of a power cut, you will lose connection to your broadband and landline if you have one. And if you live in a poor mobile or no signal area uh, and you're reliant on your landline, you won't be able to dial out, for example, in an emergency. I'm with BT and I've purchased this pair of battery backup power packs from the online BT EE shop. The backup packs have got different part numbers, one specifically to power the ONT and the other one powers the hub. And this twin pack cost me $84.99. If you're not on full fibre to the premises, that's FTTP, but you have been switched to digital, you'll only need one battery backup power pack for the hub. Uh, this one's labelled for BT Digital Voice Service non-FTTP, but it's still priced at $84.99. We'll take a look at the box contents. This one's the non-FTTP for the hub. We have the user guide, and there's the model number. 
There are two hub connector cables. One's for the BT Smart Hub 2 and one's for the EE Smart Hub Plus, depending on which hub you have. And that's because the connectors are different, as you can see there. The power cable and the backup pack itself. This is the power pack. Let's get some dimensions. The depth is 185 millimetres or 18.5 centimetres or seven and a quarter inch. Width is 82 millimetres or 8.2 centimetres or three and two eighths of an inch. Height is 168 millimetres or 16.8 centimetres or six and five eighths of an inch. Well, have a look at this battery backup pack now. Bearing in mind, the other one was labelled 4BT Digital Voice Service non-FTTP. Well, this one's labelled 4BT Digital Voice Service FTTP, and it's for the ONT, the Optical Network Termination Box. We have an information sheet, user guide, and there's your model number. There's the ONT connector cable. Both ends are labelled. That one says battery backup. And that end says fibre ONT. The mains cable and the battery backup pack. And the dimensions are exactly the same as the other one. And as you can see, you can hang it on a wall. Right, the instructions are telling me I need to connect the internal battery. I'm going to slide the back cover off. There's the positive lead. Slide out the battery. The negative's already connected, so I've got to connect this positive lead on the positive terminal. That's on. Slide the battery back in. Um, slide the cover back on and now I've got to do that one right I can go and set them up now we're back in the study and this is the hub connecting cable I'm going to plug this end into the battery backup and this end into the smart hub too right that's that connected and I'm also going to place this do not use USB with battery backup sticker over the USB port on the back of the hub I've put my sticker at the side of the USB port because if you want to use it while the battery backup's not in use, you can do. I've plugged the battery backup in here and I'm going to unplug the hub. Better take the protective film off the front of the backup. And I'm going to disconnect the original power lead from the hub and plug the battery backup in. there we go I'm back up in the loft here's the ONT and here's the battery backup here's the ONT connecting cable one end into the backup and the other end into the ONT so I've got to unplug the ONT and plug in the battery backup so pull out the power lead and plug in the ONT power lead uh, we're powered back up now both battery backups are in place instead of having this set up I've now got this set up the ONT takes its power from the battery backup unit and the hub also takes its power from the battery backup unit the batteries take 24 hours to charge and I'll come back to you then. A couple of days have gone by and both battery backups are fully charged and I want to do an experiment. I want to see how long the batteries last in the event of a power cut. I'm going to simulate a power cut by turning off the battery backup power at the wall socket, 
The green LED on the front should switch to DC to indicate it's running on battery and there shouldn't be any interruption to the hub. And now I'm switching off the ONT back up. After three hours and 40 minutes, the battery backup is now letting me know there's 45% of power remaining. And the DC LED is flashing and it bleeps four times every minute. After seven hours and 50 minutes, the battery's run out. I've lost the power to the hub, which means I've lost the internet. Well, it's been 15 hours now since I turned the power off to the ONT battery backup and the 45% power remaining alarm still hasn't come on. It's not worth continuing with the ONT battery backup because the hub battery backup ran out over seven hours ago, so I've turned it back on. At the end of the day, the ONT maximum power consumption is 6 watts and the hub maximum power consumption is 17.7 watts. So in theory, the ONT battery backup should last approximately three times longer than the hub battery backup. So the conclusion, well my battery backup experiment wasn't a real life power cut and we carried on using the internet as normal. Well, in a real life power cut situation, we would have reduced our internet usage, lowering the power consumption of the hub, which in turn would have increased the life of the battery backup, giving us an increase on the seven hours, 50 minutes. If you live in an area of poor or no mobile signal and you are reliant on a landline, then battery backup will give you vital emergency backup time to make urgent calls and allow incoming calls. Well, that's my setup with BT, but other providers may be different. I hope this video has been helpful and made the switch to full fibre a little clearer for everyone. We'll be back caravanning in my next video. See you again soon.